All right, my friends, welcome back. And it is time for another Retro Review Reaction. And this is the 1984 Cadillac El Dorado. This was recommended to me by a viewer, and I love the idea. Cadillac at this time, they were lost, let's face it. They were coming out of the 70s. They had not yet reached the early 90s with the new Seville and El Dorado. And this was the 80s, of a dead period for them. This is a miserable car, and I'm super interested to see what Motor Week thought of it when it was brand new. Rock Auto. Tire Rack and die hard. You know, you'd think that with the sales of domestic luxury cars doing nicely these days, the folks at Cadillac would be all smiles. But thinking about the future is producing some glum expressions around GM's prestige division. The traditional caddy buyer is getting ever older, and Cadillac is having a tough time attracting the affluent young to the fold. It seems that current buyers couldn't give a hoot about sportiness, but that's exactly what the youngish, upwardly mobile lust for. What to do? Well, the small Cimarron sports sedan was supposed to be one answer, but so far it hasn't exactly set any sales records and Caddy's often rumored megabuck Italian sports car may still just be all talk. So current reality has forced Cadillac to turn its considerable engineering talents to putting some sport into one of its more handsome Luxo boats, the Eldorado Coupe, and here's what they wrought. A car that's proof that time doesn't stand still. Take a long look at this black night of the highway. Also available in a hue called Sonora Saddle Fire Mist, that's medium amber metallic to us. The Eldorado Touring Coupe's trim is strikingly simple. Oh, so there's so much to unpack just in what they said right there. So first off, they talked about the Cimarron, where GM, seriously, they looked at the BMW 2002, the 3 Series, and they said, hey, a Chevy gussied up will be more than enough to compete with the BMWs. The Mercedes of the world. What a incredibly short-sighted, obtuse, complete misunderstanding of the marketplace and what buyers actually wanted. Instead of investing in something to capture those younger buyers, they had the Cimarron out there and now they're quote gussying up this. Honestly, this is pretty handsome to me. I, I mean, I like boxy but you know it looks like I don't know somewhere between a Chevy Monte Carlo a Buick Regal Grand National Cadillac Eldorado I don't I don't know it's it's just not beautiful you know it's too squared off at the front it's trying too hard those rectangular headlights those wheels that just scream you know to me Monte Carlo uh, it's just kind of a letdown, but let's see what they say. Most chrome has been replaced with body-colored inserts. The oversized 225-70 tires stand out nicely on cast 15-inch wheels. And a solid gray-black rocker panel molding runs the entire length of the Eldorado's now clean slab side. But the real treat about the Turing Coupe package is what you can't see. Cadillac's Turing suspension system includes larger front and rear anti-sway bars, higher effort power ball type steering, stiffer springs, and more responsive shock valving. And all of it works wonders. An average speed through our slow slalom of 43.7 miles per hour rates good for any car and better than most. There's still lots of body roll, but steering is quick, precise, with little plow. If you remember that the Eldo is front-wheel drive, you're even more impressed. Through these irregularly spaced cones, our Touring Coupe refused to lose all its composure, even when the pathway was barely wide enough for it to pass. But the Touring Coupe isn't a sports car, and the limits of its handling ability can be reached all too quickly. A too zealous tug on the large steering wheel, followed by an equally forceful attempt to recover, produced this quick but controllable spin. 
Even with the standard car's very cushy ride, you can still put a lot of faith in its overall agility. I <laughs> love, love the bow. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. And, you know, here's the deal. When GM and their massive resources apply themselves to a project, right? They can make really good products. It's like GM through the 80s spread themselves too thin. And Cadillac was just one example of it. Now this is a front wheel drive vehicle that has ridiculous front overhangs, ridiculous rear overhangs, and just is, it's all wrong. Certainly when you consider what Acura, Infiniti, and Lexus were gonna come out with in just five-ish years, but they applied themselves and created something that handled pretty well, quote, for what it was, right? That spin was controllable, but it was also completely avoidable if they had the right platform. That's my thought on it. But acceleration times reflect the Eldorado's obvious birthright. While shifts are smooth and reasonably crisp, Zero to 60 times were only average at 13.1 seconds. In addition, the standing quarter mile produced only a fair showing of 19.3 seconds at 70. That is not world class by any stretch of the imagination. That's, that's slow, guys. Let's face it, that's slow. Partially because the four-speed automatic overdrive is the only transaxle available. However, since you always feel like you're going slower than you actually are in this 3,830 pounder, too much power might just bring too many citations. At least a typical passing time of 5.4 seconds from 40 to 55 was in dead center of our acceptable range. The Eldo's brakes, however, did a splendid job. With four wheel powered discs, pedal pressure was solid yet easy to manage. Stops from 55 averaged a surprisingly short 128 feet. Rear wheel lockup, typical for a front wheel drive car, was always manageable with only modest tail twitch. And that's what I'm talking about. When GM applies themselves, they can do really well. That's a good stopping distance. That tail swinging out uh, tells me the balancing is off, but in terms of the distance, it's not terrible, I guess. Fade and pull were never a problem. The only engine available with the Turing package is the aluminum alloy 4.1 liter V8 that Cadillac introduced in 1982. Output is modest at 135 horses and 200 pounds of torque, with fuel delivery through a pair of computer control throttle body injectors. Despite the maze of hoses and wires, the small eight fits easily into the Eldo's long engine bay. An onboard diagnostic system should also help dealer mechanics find most power plant problems quickly, but probably not cheaply. You know, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that in 1984, if you're looking for a luxury car, and there's, sure, there's the BMWs and the Mercedes and some Jaguars out there, if you're leaning towards domestic luxury, this is not a bad option. That engine does not produce a lot of horsepower, a lot of torques. It handles okay. Its styling is derivative, right? I guess that's the best way to say it. It's too blocky. There's, I, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's too blocky, but it doesn't lack the presence. At the same time, years later, Cadillac went thinner and narrower and longer, and it still lacked the presence that the BMWs and the Mercedes brought to marketplace. So this at least had some stature. I can understand why somebody would look at this and say, V8 engine, front wheel drive, handles good, and it looks a little stately by, let's say, 70s standards, I can understand why somebody would go for this vehicle. Nothing cheap either about the Touring Coupe single color interior. From the smallest power switch on the door to the telescoping and tilting wheel, everything says Cadillac. 
Unfortunately, it also means you get fuel range and speed readouts only. International buyers at least have their choice of English or metric. Oh, that, that unbelievable, endless rush to provide digital displays back in the 80s. I just, oh, I wish somebody could go back to Cadillac and say, you're stupid. Just do the best you can with analog because digital is too early. It's horrible. It really, really is horrible, and I wish somebody had stopped it, but they didn't. Luscious-looking leather-covered bucket seats have multiple adjustments, but not quite enough side support for our taste, making it easy to slide off your perch in a turn. Well, and, and this is not a sports car. That's part of the problem, is that when you're comparing it to the 5 Series or the 3 Series, the ultimate sports sedan, right? The Cadillacs weren't meant for that. They were meant for cruising, so the fact that you slid around in the seats wasn't an issue for them whatsoever, but uh, this interior looks plush. The Turing Coupe also has a nifty twin-weld storage console between the seats. Like all Eldorados, the dash is laden with plastic wood, but of an unusually lifelike... Look at all those joints. This is... This is hideous, actually. I, I, uh, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. I mean, the center part that they just showed, the couple of hatches, that's pretty cool. That's pretty smart underneath the armrest. But this fake wood just ends at a radio that's got aluminum on it and black plastic and these vents, and it's terrible. They may say it looks somewhat realistic, but joint after joint after joint after joint of material, this is, this is terrible. Absolutely, absolutely terrible. No sense of harmony amongst everything. High quality. Proper, I suppose, since here it surrounds one of the most lifelike sound systems you can buy, the renowned Delco Bose cassette receiver. The four speakers, each with its own 25-watt amp, are matched to the car's interior design. The system works far better in the Eldorado than in more craft cars such as the Corvette. You'll have no trouble hearing it either. At 55, we recorded only 65 quiet decibels. And although we doubt most owners will use the Turing Coupe's back seat, at least it's roomy enough for most possible preoccupation. I, I'm sorry, does not, that not look like the start of a porn? video to you that stroking of the mustache and the leather jack I mean, come on give me a break I, it's the 80s I get it this was the style but oh that's painful to watch as is the trunk our four bags fit in with no problem though space would be far more usable if it weren't for the center mounted spare tire that always looks ready to fall Though the Turing Coupe is hardly a fuel sipper, we have little problem with the EPA mileage ratings of 18 city and 28 highway. Nothing uh, horrible there, nothing surprising, nothing great, nothing terrible, but 18 city, 28 highway, I, I guess in 1984 that's kind of what you would expect from a quote luxury car, but look at the proportions on this car. Look at the distance between the front wheel and the front bumper. That incredibly long hood, that really long trunk, and the distance between the rear wheel and the trunk. Now, to be fair, that rear wheel is located well behind where the rear seat would be. But that interior space ends up looking pretty tight relative to future designs, right? And this is a front wheel drive car. This should have had a smaller overhang and more interior space. It's like GM did everything exactly wrong in this. It is not ugly, but it is disproportionate to the point of not being attractive. Maybe that's the best way to say it. This is a bad example of what can be done with front wheel drive. 
nor our test loop average of 20, given the mission and the clientele of this car. But what impressions did it leave with our own jaundice-eyed crew? The Eldorado Touring Coupe is not a performance sports car. But for the traditional Cadillac buyer who's looking for a sportiness and suspension, along with a tremendous sound system, the Eldorado is absolutely terrific. Frankly, I thought the Eldorado Touring Coupe was going to handle something like the SS United States. And I'm surprised. It's quick and it's confident. And frankly, for a big whale of a car, it's a lot of fun. All in all, we have to come away feeling good about this $25,000 country club racer. It has no real faults, but we're not sure it's what Cadillac needs to attract a new, younger market. It's still awfully big. But we did enjoy our visit with the Eldorado Touring Coupe and made others' aspirations of Cadillac ownership a lot more understandable. And I think that sums it up, is that this is Cadillac making one of their large cars aimed for their older buyers better and substantially better. It's not bad, except that it doesn't hit the mark. They completely missed where the marketplace was moving to. Maybe they knew and they couldn't do anything about it, right? And that's my suspicion. This is taking that Eldorado and making it better, slightly better. And the fact of the matter is, if you and I went back to 1984 and we weren't buying a Mercedes or a BMW, we wanted something like a Cadillac. V8, front wheel drive, comfortable interior, great sound system, cruises along with competitive mileage. Yeah, this would meet most of our needs. It's in hindsight we can look at it and say it was not in touch with where the market was going. Was Cadillac blind or were they just trying to do the best with what they had. Let me know in your comments.